Okay, this is my clock that I've uh, made and been working on for a little bit of time. Um, project for week six of the Beauty and Joy computing class at Berkeley. Really fun. Anyways, if you'll notice, it's a little bit different from the last upload that I did on this clock. Um, over here, instead of having the full clock thing, I actually just have it set to draw a single clock with a diameter as a variable. This is useful because I can draw any size clock that I want. And thank you, Mr. Jens Monig. I probably botched your name, and I'm so sorry about that. Um, thank you. Your feedback was really helpful. Yes, I decided that actually warp loop would probably be better. Thank you for pointing that one out. Really useful. Um, so that has been um, utilized right here. It gets this all done instantly. Pretty nifty. Um, and again, this is just triggered when you press the green flag. Boom. Presto. You'll probably notice this little gadget down here, and you'll also notice that this is probably a little higher up than you last saw. I'll explain that in a second. And actually, I'll go ahead and get to this little date thing down here. I, again, simplified just like with all the other hands. Everything is now um, shrunken to not take up as much space when you're actually looking at it. However, the date is slightly modified to be a little higher. Down here when it says the go-to, it's just raised up a little bit higher. And that actually has to do with that little clock down there. Um, okay, so you might have seen this little sprite over here. And this is labeled background. This is a small bit of code that basically states whenever um, the time is set to an evening, for mine, I think it's about just if it's after six o'clock and or if it's after six a.m. and earlier than it looks like six p.m. the screen will be with a white sorry the stage will have a white background. However, as soon as it's after six p.m. and it's earlier than seven a.m. then it will turn the I think I said that backwards, sorry. Either way, um, when it's a night time, it is, in fact, I'm going to, you probably saw that very shortly. Let me just disappoint this. Set the background to have some sort of star pattern. Really kind of cool, just a little thing I wanted to do for aesthetics. Not that anyone's gonna be running this overnight, but hey, you never know. And then, now to get to this little timer gadget. This is a long chunk of code, it took me about a day to figure out how to do. Um, and up here at the start, when the flag is hit, it starts it. And for some reason, it's not labeling it. Oh, I know why. Oops. Let's just drag this up real quick. Ah! Sorry, I'm unprofessional. It labels timer <laughs> because it is, in fact, a timer. Now, over here, when I click this little sprite, it's going to ask me to set a time. I'm going to go ahead and do one minute. And then it's going to ask me to do a time in seconds. But I'm going to put in cat. It doesn't like that. So we'll do five seconds. So one minute and five seconds. Then ask me to start. If, again, I say something like cat, it'll just re-ask it. Start. It'll start. It's only... I only have it working in minute long increments. That's partially because I was running a little short on creativity and I didn't want to have to run through on the same style that I did up here at the um, hour and minute. But it does get the functionality across and it's a proof of concept really. It's running on the same sort of premise as the date and um, time. Basically, it runs the sprite back and forth repeatedly um, to erase it and then reprint, um, relabel, sorry, um, the current time that is left. And I'm using a for loop over here with the integer, the for integer loop, and warping through the erase and then redraw. I'm going to have it wait one second between each time it does that just to keep it so that it's one second increments. 
I noticed that after long periods of time it does somewhat dilute just because the actual warp does take up some time. However, it's a relatively unnoticeable thing. Another thing you might have just heard is that little beeping. That comes with this play note. It is, it plays three quick beeps, and then waits for about a half a second, and then plays three more quick beeps. Just a simple little alarm tone. After it does that, it clears it. However, had I, instead of typing start to start it, done like 5, 21, and cancel, because I don't want it to actually start. I changed my mind for some reason. I can type cancel, and it cuts the entire code. Nothing happens, it simply reverts back to its original state. I do believe that is all that I have in fact changed. Thank you again for listening in, and I do strongly welcome feedback. Uh, any ideas that you guys might have for possibly making this work a little better, please do write that in a comment below. And again, hope you enjoyed, hope this was somewhat useful to you, or that it piqued your interest. I will leave notes and a link to this code in the description. Have a great day.